Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one. I'm also back, too. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I have stuff to do, mainly sleep. Sleep is good, so I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. Probably saw the Hobo Cat very quietly and selfly sneak out of here. But I'm here not to talk about El Gato as El Vagabundo Hobo Dos Vente Cinco would say. But instead, I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw. Before I do that, I always have some thank yous to shout out. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone that watched the videos I made. And I hope everyone had a fourth of had a happy 4th of July. And then you still have all of your fingers in place. It's always a good thing. Um, but more importantly, let's see. Master Carver! You, sir, one by six count. And she two oh two use her on match of the air guitar. I think we were talking about 
who Kairi Sane is married to. She's married to evil. You know, that will be talking about N Nikki Cross is married to Big Demo. And oh, congratulations. Congratulations, Sarah Logan. Um, rumor is you are pregnant. Congratulations. We're taking bets to see who, the, who after Becky Lynch, who the first person. Let's see. Oh, there we go. That's pro oh, yeah, that's a lot better. Oh, it was a lot better. Center myself. But yeah, we were, I think in Discord, we were, I think everyone lost. No one counted on you getting pregnant next up for Becky. You fooled us all. Good, congratulations, Eric Rowe. I think that's his real last name. I think it's like Sarah Rowe. But I forget, and it's always spelled differently, though. And that's okay. And congratulations, nonetheless, though. Um, so, Raw starts off really interesting. So it's with Drew McIntyre. And Dolph Ziggler comes out because Dolph Ziggler is not going to reveal the gimmick for the gimmick card in two Sundays. That's going to be a weird show. So all gimmick matches. Um, I'll get into that later. Uh, he says, no, it's going to be a surprise, so we'll see what happens. And then he's Slater. I thought he was going to Impact Wrestling. Boy, was I wrong. Shoot. Um, I could have sworn he was back to Impact Wrestling. He shows up. He and Drew McIntyre, of course, were part of the three-man band. Ooh. Back in the day, when Drew McIntyre first came out, uh, Drew McIntyre had to get a little bit more grizzled, a little bit more jacked. Um, so he's Slater and Drew McIntyre. They had a little fuzzy moment. That's pretty cool. And that was also a surprise. Then we have Sasha and Bailey. They were talking to... Um, I have to remember her name now. It's the blonde, though. The blonde, not Renee. And then Asuka just, like, creeps up behind her. But Asuka's the best. Uh, so the first official match... It's Kyrie Sane taking on Sasha Banks. This was a long, longer match than I thought. I didn't realize that first segment took so long. Those first few segments, like, the Drew McIntyre thing seemed to take a while. The Sasha and Bailey thing didn't seem didn't seem that long. They let this match go for a good, oh, I'd say 15, 20 minutes, because this first hour went by really quick. That second hour sucked. The thing is, again, Raw is such a slog to get through. But I do it because of you, my YouTube audience. And there's nothing else better. Well, I could be sleeping, but that's a whole other issue. Uh, so first match, we have Kyrie Sane taking on Sasha Sasha Banks. Uh, Kyrie Sane is just opening up. Slap Sasha in the chest so often. Ouch. That hurts guys. Can't. If you don't. If, if you hit. Go a little lower. A chest of women, that really hurts. They're sensitive there. Um, then it's a really quick start. Goes from uh, those slaps to the um, head scissor takedown to Royal Octopus. Uh, then eventually Sasha beats up poor Kyrie Sane right in front of Asuka too. And I, I was I also surprised. I thought Kyrie Sane was done. They might be holding off. Either that, or this is when, because I know they, I don't think this was live. Maybe that's why Heath Slater was there. But I want to say this was one of the many segments that was already taped, I think, last week. Might be wrong with that. Again, out there in the YouTube universe, you can always feel free to correct me. So I'm like, Kyrie, you saying it's back? I, I, so I, that makes me think. Or wonder if this is one of the tape segments. Oh, there we go. Oh, I feel a little bit cleaner. Dinner was good. And so it's a little piece of chocolate. Multiple pieces of chocolate for dessert. But um, So then Sasha beats up Kyrie Sane in front of Asuka. Uh, Asuka kind of distracts both Sa Sasha and Bailey. That allows Kyrie Sane to hit a... Baseball slide into both of them. They get back in the ring. Sasha has a pretty good-looking backbreaker. 
I think in the Discord we were talking about, well, hopefully Kyrie Sane's not concussed. I'd be more worried if Sasha Banks, because she has a history of doing dumb stuff, getting concussed herself. Um, there was a lot of wrestling on the apron, too. That, I'm like, you have two wrestlers that are known for concussions. They should be nowhere near that ring apron. Not so much for the fact that the ring apron is the hardest part of the ring. It's just that that fall down to the mat. That's not part of the ring, but that's pretty hard, too. I don't care how many mats. Unless you have, like, a cushiony, air-filled crash mat. Just basic, like... Like the Tommy mats or wrestling mats. They're not going to do anything. Especially from that distance. Uh, Kyrie Sane then hit a super forearm. And then goes to two running blockbusters and a spear. You still have it. Uh, then there was a little bit more. She went to like some Muda crab lock. Well, the one thing I didn't like. Is that. <coughs> That's just some spittle going down the wrong pipe. Not coronavirus. But um, Bailey interfered. This match was going so well. On one hand, I understand why Bailey interfered. On the other hand, it didn't need Bailey's interference if Kyrie's on the out anyway. I mean, she could eat a loss, if, especially if it was a distracted loss, it would still be good. She didn't necessarily have to win. It's nice that she won. I just don't like the way she did it. Uh, eh. We got to fill the death to finish, folks. And you know what that means, folks. We got to fill the death to cheeseburger. Then we had a recap of, uh, of Seth and Murphy. Alberto and Alistair Black, because Black got jumped in the back, and he's wearing Rey Mysterio's mask. Indeed. Uh, Kevin Owens' show. It's next. He's like, you know what? I know where this is going to go. Takes all the chairs, throws throws chairs out somewhere. I don't want to throw that, because I don't want to break that, because if not, I'll have to sit in this one. This one was on its last legs. This one's getting old very quickly. One day I need one of those like fancy gamer chairs. Those cost money, though. But we'll see. And I need tires. But just got my eye insurance stuff. So who knows what happens. Because I, I do need new contacts. <sighs> Sometime prime Memorial Day. Wait, my day's off go. Or sooner if I quit. But uh, we had Ray. So Ray Mysterio, uh, so Ray Mysterio comes out. Um, Kevin Owens, again, no chairs in the ring. Seth Rollins comes down. He challenges Ray. Ray shows up. Dominic's there with him. It's always good to see. So it's going to be uh, Ray Mysterio and Kevin Owens taking on Seth Rollins and Murphy. And Austin Theory is nowhere to be found. Austin Theory, you don't put your hands on underage girls. Very, very, very bad. Gets you. Ding. Out of here. Because you out of here, Austin Theory. Again, that's just allegedly. Although it's leaning more towards the more so than than just random randomness. Uh, so with this, Ray and Murphy start off the match. Murphy gets beat up a little bit. Now Rollins is in there. Then he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kevin Owens for a little bit. Kevin Owens hits this uh, senton on him, the running senton. That's always good to see. Uh, Murphy and Ray, these two are so quick in the ring. I'm kind of shocked at that. I'm, I'm impressed with Murphy's athleticism. And Ray Mysterio, you still have it. It's always good to see. He hasn't aged that much. I'm sure, I'm sure taking time off has to heal the body which makes it that much easier to come back from uh, and of course he's spending time with his son he's probably doing basic basic drills with his son nothing nothing too strenuous but i know if i don't go to the gym 
for like more than a couple days kind of feel weird and funky. That's why I set up my little pitch back, which again, you can see one of my previous videos, what I did during said Florida lockdown. I try to get some exercise and you just feel better for some reason. Again, going to the gym feels good. You get to talk to some people, see chicks in hot clothes. Well, wait, but um, yeah. Yeah, and, and actually work out too. Uh, again, that leads me to question why, how just wearing a face mask, a sports bra, and near underwear, lycra shorts actually protect you from stuff. Who knows? Yeah, at least I go in there. I have pants and a sweatshirt on, so I know I'm fairly well protected. But yeah, like sports bra and like tight lycra bike shorts. And wearing the, and, and then they say, oh, well, I got my face mask on. It's like, sweetie, that face mask ain't doing you any, any good. Trust me. I think there actually was a news report, and then I'll get off this tangent, where I think if you sneeze, it travels like eight feet. Most cloth face masks only stop it from going, like it reduces it by like two feet. Um, you really need like, if there's like the super heavy duty thing where it's still where your, your sneeze still travels two feet so i mean just wearing a bandana in your face really doesn't do any good i think the neoprene ones reduce it it's like that weird in between it's like four feet but yeah i mean if you're in a crowded area it's still not going to do you any good but that's a, again a whole other issue Again, it's bikini season here in Florida, so it's just weird. I'll, I'll have to pick up that magazine and show, show you guys the picture of the bikini girl in a mask. And it's just like, why, why bother? But that, that's something for another another day. Uh, back to the smash, though. Um, yeah, Murphy and Ray worked so quick. Rollins, again, he took out Owens so that Ray's more, Ray Mysterio is more isolated. Uh... Dominic, I know he gets confronted by Seth Rollins. He gets his eyes raked. Uh, Dominic spends like most of the time just. At least Dominic has learned to sell because at least he was rubbing his eye. So at least he's like, oh, boom, ah. Oh. Yeah, I can see fine now. But he's like, God damn, what? This hurts. And he, again, he learned something from his dad. Good to see. Uh, he also learned something from Eddie Guerrero, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, Seth then gets in. He does a half Boston Crab on the bad ankle of Kevin Owens because I guess he did break that when he does his jump from the sign. Again, the top ropes, plenty height. You don't have to go from like signs and like structures and balconies and scaffolds. That's, that's just way too much. Uh, Ray still so fast. He does again. He does the seated senton. There's a head scissors into Rollins and Murphy, setting up for the double six one nine. Um, Dominic got worked. Seth got him. Said, you know what? If if, if it's up there, or the boy gets it. Unfortunately, Oscar Black recovers enough, and Seth's just like, hit me, hit me, so I can shoot. And he tells him the reason why to hit him. If you're going to be the heel, at least say, go ahead and hit me. Don't say, go ahead and hit me so I can choose my stipulation. That's stupid. Again, Seth, not the brightest heel. But, oh, well, we'll see what happens. But Dominic is smart. He rides the rest distracted with Aleister Black and Seth. So without the referee seeing, he rakes the eyes of Murphy. Whoa! Eddie Guerrero would have been proud of him. Of course, that's in reference to the fact that there was at one time a uh, legal guardianship pap Dominic's papers on a pole match. But yeah, years ago between Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio. That must have been something interesting to, to talk about the dinner table with those people with. But um, because of that, Rey Mysterio actually was able to hit the frog splash on Murphy. Uh, Kevin Owens and Rey Mysterio wins. 
this was fun. Dominic got involved. Just the right amount of overbooking. Where it wasn't ridiculous. Having Dominic there made sense. He's the son. Alistair Black got jumped before. It makes sense. This was a good surf and turf match. So the stipulation, just like it's been reported, this is going to be, um, oh, oh, Aura, poor Aura. I think I'm saying that probably poorly. Eye for an eye match. So the loser wins when the loser loses an eye. You have to ask Vader about that. Because, again, he had his eye popped out by Stan Hansen, I think it was. I forget now if it was Stan Hansen. Or Bob, it might have been Cowboy Bob Orton too. I think I think it was Bob Orton that actually gouged literally Vader's eye out, and Vader literally took his eye and put it back in his socket. Whoa, those guys were tough back then. Uh, MVP and Alfie Lashley then come out. Where is Lana at? Lana might be out of, on the outs, or she's with Natalia. Who knows doing what, but. Whatever. Um, the new U.S. belt. That's a nice looking belt. It's very much in line in the kind of diamondish shape of the WWE Championship and Universal belt. Has a nice big. Um, I I'd want to guess it's a CNC Gold Eagle on it. With the red, white, and blue underneath, and it says uh, U.S. Champion. It, I'll tell you what, WWE, they did this belt right. And it's a lot better looking than the TNT belt. Again, they didn't have to, it doesn't take that long to engrave or do, do that stuff, though. I don't know why AEW rushed their, their belt when it wasn't done correctly. WWE, they had this new belt. I'll tell you what. It looked amazing. It it almost... It actually looked shinier and flashier than the other men's belts they have. Because the IC belt's kind of blah. Because it's just like they literally just... They, they see and see the, like metal plating and put it on top of black leather. This, you could tell they did some, like, 3D work. You can see the um, the eagle's wings layered. It looks amazing, folks. So, WWE did it right. And then Cedric and Ricochet show up. And then, holla, 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 player. You have an impromptu, I guess maybe. Tag match. It's MVP because MVP says since he beat Apollo Crews, Apollo Crews is out. Probably just needed a little time off. Again, I think the whole taping things. He had a beast of a match. So MVP didn't do much during this match anyway. But again, I'll get to that. Again, I think this was all tapes. So who knows? Uh, it was Lashley and Bobby Lashley, and MVP taking on Cedric Alexander and Ricochet. Wow, Ricochet can't catch a break since he came out to the main roster. Ever since he left Aleister Black. I don't know what he did to piss Vince off. And Cedric Alexander, ever since I think he tagged him with Gold Dust, the 205 division. I don't know. Their stock went through the floor. Uh, but in this match, MVPs in street clothes. He looks really good. In I took a suit jacket off, so he's there. Nice dress shirt, nice tie, pants, dress shoes. I wonder how much he has to pull his kicks, because I know dress shoe bottoms, they're, they're, they're wood or like the hard le hardened leather. They're not the soft, rubbery stuff, rubbery, foamy stuff of wrestling shoes. So I wonder how much, and, and the again, it's just a whole different construction. I wonder how much he had to, how much he had to pull his kicks, so that he didn't like wreck the midsection of Cedric a few times. But that's either here nor there. Um, Ricochet. So for the most part, MVP gets in. 
Uh, he, he tags in Lashley right away. Lashley does most of the work for the match. Makes sense. Lashley's in his wrestling gear, MVPs, and street clothes. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander, they double team Lashley for a bit. Then Lashley just like tosses Ricochet. Lashley is freakishly strong. I wonder if it's from all his sessions with the chiropractor. I have no idea, but there's no way in heck, no way in frozen Florida heck, a chiropractor is doing a third of those things to me that he did to Bobby Lashley, especially that hammer and chisel near, near, near the butt crack. That's, that's no, 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 no. That's, that's exit only, sir. But <laughs> um, with an MVP wrestled in the suit, really good, too. I was shocked. I'll actually hit that delayed suplex to a flatliner. Center takes out Bobby Lashley for a little bit. However, Lashley gets back in. Hits the spear, and that's the end of that. Bobby Lashley and MVP win. Actually, a pretty good solid match, all things considering. It's a cheeseburger match. Then we have Andrade and, and Angel Garza arguing black backstage. Selena Vega is trying to keep those two together. Ric Flair, woo, shows up, just stares at Selena Vega's tits for a while. Goes, <laughs> wow, yeah, you can see, but very little for the imagination there, folks. Uh, he says, you got you, you two better get in order. This is a legend killer. He's gonna kill you both. Orton comes out. He lays. He says, listen. I'm do things my way. Uh, I think previously in the big show, Big Show and Viking Raiders had talked a little bit, um, talking about bowling balls. Big Show's, get serious. And uh, then the Kabuki Warriors, Kairi Sane's freeze plays a pretty darn good recorder. Uh, she's probably playing her way home right now because she won her match. So we'll, we'll get to what happened in the Oscar match as well. But then the next match was the Big Show and Viking Raiders taking on Andrade, Angel Garza, and one Randall Orton. In the heels corner, you had both Selena Vega and Ric Flair. Woo! Ric Flair is, I guess he's happy to be there. He just wanted to stare at Selena Vega. That's all he wanted. Uh, Big Show. Oh! Ouch! Those chest slaps. Oh! I felt those folks, those, those are vicious. Um, event, and then, so Big Show then tags Ivar in. Uh, Andrade gets into it. He, he's some shots from Ivar, then Big Show chops him too. And then it's, it's the whole, everyone using each other as a weapon. Ivar, um, Eric picks up Ivar, drops him on top of Andrade. The Big Show then drops Eric. On top of Andrade, um, got one for the pinfall. Andrade kicked out at like two. Angel Garza came in. Angel Garza was yelling at Andrade. It's like, what's wrong with you? Why don't you want to win? Why are you let me in? I won't get pinned. And then Andrade started yelling back at him. And, I, and uh, or Randy Orton pulled Angel Garza aside and said, you shut the F up. I'm going to tell you what to do. Stop your yapping. Understand? And Angel goes like, Yes, sir. He said this, he went over to Andra Andrade. You, shut your yap. And Andrade looked at him and said, Yes, sir. So, wow. Randy Orton just laid the law down there, folks. Um, then Eric got beat up. By the heels, because again, the heels, they do their cheap shots. And Randy Orton knows how to do that stuff. He's really good at it. The big show, though, he just threw Andrade somewhere. Um, tried to go, Orton tried to go from an RK out of nowhere on the big show. Big show just said, ah, I know this. I'll toss you aside. Um, Andrade, again, try, he tried to slap the, the big show. He, he also put the sleeper on the big show. I'm sorry. Big show is just too big for him. Um, Ivar eventually gets in there. He does his cartwheels. There's no Viking experience. Randy Orton hit, gets, does a blind tag. He RKO's an unsuspected and soon-to-be father, Eric Rowe. 
and Andrade, Angel Garza, and Randy Orton win. And here we have Peyton Royce, who I didn't realize has a tattoo on her arm. That tattoo is pretty cute. You know what? I'll applaud Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce, that's a cute womanly tattoo. Like somewhere on her forearm, I forget if it's her right or left forearm, but like right around here, she has a little rose tattooed on her. That looks cute. I mean, I think I've seen women. I'm very picky about women, especially with tattoos. I think if, if you're going to be a woman, like the one, all the Ruby Rice tattoos are colorful. And most are somewhat feminine. The thing that turns me off about a tattooed woman is when they have like the, like the scary demons and skulls and and liquor bottles and or huge pieces on them. Um, a woman with tattoos of a naked woman, kind of sketchy when they have, first of all, women with tattoos across their, across their tits and chest is, 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 is no boy now. Um, that just means either you are a stripper or you wanted to be a stripper because then you start to look at them and say, why are you looking at my chest? It's like, well, you have a big freaking tattoo across your tits. Oh, um, so again, I think I knew a woman with like a little painted tree fog on her, on her chest. It was kind of, kind of fun to touch and rub. Of course you touch and rub other places there too, but that wasn't too bad. But again, if you're going to have like, like exposed tattooed organs of like steel and, and other Non-feminine stuff. Tramp, tribal tramp stamps. It just means you do stuff for money. Um, I can understand. Again, Peyton Royce's tattoo. Very feminine. It actually looked good on her. Again, women who get like little flowers. Again, it maybe was like, say, like that big. It's not a whole sleeve. It's not anything crazy. That's nice looking. That's it's feminine. Again, um, I dated women that have little um, flower anklets. They look pretty too. Moderately done fairies, mermaids, uh, things like that are okay. A koi fish is, is like a, having a koi fish sleeve. Or a koi fish, I guess half sleeve. But that's okay too. It's again when you have like the dancing skulls. Um, I don't know. Skull can skull candy arts. Depending on the color of it, can be really good. Again, if you're going to have a large mural mural on your back, not so much. Ruby Riot again, her tattoos work with her. Again, I'm not dating Ruby Riot though. So it's always hard to say things like that. But again, the one Peyton Royce has looks good on her. Because uh, then it was her and Billy Kay. And they were. Talking about how Ruby Wright has no friends. Maybe it's the fact Ruby Wright's all, tat, all, all tatted up. Who knows? And the green lips. Although that is kind of a punk look though. I, see, I don't mind. I don't think the green lipstick's that much of a turnoff. I think it's just all the tattoos. And on TV, at least, she looks really pale. Pale women are pasty women I've always made fun of. That's a whole other issue. Ooh, I should look at that up quickly. Well, that, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Cedric and MVP are talking. MVP is like, hey, I understand why you did what you did, but come with me. I'll make you a star. 
Um, our truth goes backstage for the 24-7 championship. He runs into Randy Orton. When he runs in one direction, Orton wants something to do with him. Tazawa, this group of ninjas. Orton says, yeah, he went over there. Randy Orton's just being a dick. But Randy Orton being a dick is a good thing, though. Then the next match, it was Ruby Riot taking on Billy Kay. This was a short match. Uh, Ruby Riot <laughs> kicked Billy Kay once and then ate a big boot. Uh, the Iconics are so loud. They're their own crowd. That's what's the one thing that's always been good about them. Uh, I'll tell you what, Billy Kay impressed me. She had like a judo style throw. And it's a type of, uh, it's a, I know it's a judo style throw because she traps the arm, goes, picks the legs, and like does like a suplex. But it's very, I know I've seen it watching all of those. Well, during, during, during the lock in. It was only YouTube to watch, so I learned a lot of judo stuff. But it's very judo looking, though. I was impressed by that. This that's the reason this match is going to be getting as much as it. Plus, <laughs> oh, she, she did a bow and arrow. The cameraman, either by direction, the cameraman or production, either of their their own sick warped accord or the direction of Kevin Dunn had Billy Kay's ass right in center frame and boy is it an amazing ass I'll say that but yeah it's you do a bar and arrow you hold your opponent's chin you grab their grab their feet or ankles depending where, where you can hold on Sometimes you cross their shins. It kind of varies underneath the chin. You roll up. You put them on top of your... So you kneel on top of them. You roll it back. So you shout everyone on your ass. And, oh my! Billy Kay is lucky she wasn't wearing a thong. And she was wearing some full coverage back there. Oh, well, I'll get into that later too. Or yeah, I'll mention that later too. About Sasha Banks pantyhose. Get better pantyhose or don't wear any at all. I don't want to see pantyhose tops. Like, it's just weird, but I'll, I'll get to that later. So the bow and arrow looked pretty good. Again, that ass. Then, like, on, from the top rope, she did, like, a super eat defeat, which is amazing. And the way you do the eat defeat, generally, you put your foot against your opponent's jaw, you fall down. As they fall down, their momentum crashes against your foot. That's it. This was done from the top rope, though. Or at least... Ruby Riot was on the top rope. She was on the second rope. So that was really good. And then somehow chunks of Ruby Riot's hair came out. Someone from the makeup department and hairstyle department did not go do a good job. I don't think that was planned because they were just like, <laughs> they were just like goofing around with it the whole time. Ruby Riot didn't seem that happy about it. Ruby Riot, I miss her short hair. Again, this will be a question posed to you, the YouTube audience. Do you like your punk girls with long hair? Or do you like your punk girls with short hair? I prefer my punk girls with short hair. It just goes with the look, I guess. Man, this was a fun, this is a short. But what they did, again, I saw that judo throw and I'm like, whoa, she knows something. Did the super eat defeat? That's a cheeseburger match. And then they gave this match a whole bunch of time. Um, it was Bailey. The next match, the main event was Bailey versus Asuka. Nikki Cross was in commentary. Nikki Cross, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. She was on commentary. Security tried to take her away from the commentary booth. I think Byron Saxon and Tom Phillips said, no, it's okay. We'll, or, like, we'll, we'll keep an eye on her. And Joe's like, it's cool, guys. Nikki Cross is like, oh, thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Um, so Nikki Cross was in commentary. Oh, Nikki Cross is this 
little hamster ball full of energy. She's the best. And then Bailey comes out. She starts to jaw at Nikki. Samoa Joe literally has to hold back Nikki Cross. You can see Nikki Cross. <laughs> it was so funny. Because Nikki Cross got up, literally like went right behind Joe's chair. And Joe's like, okay, wh wh where are you, Nikki? Like, stay here, Nikki. Oh, Nikki Cross is the best. Nikki, Nikki Cross should all Nikki Cross and Asuka should always be on commentary whenever there, whenever there is a woman match. I don't care who it is. Those two need to be on commentary. Or the Iconics, because the Iconics don't even need a microphone. I, I'm sure Michael Cole or um, um, Byron Saxon, you could hear the Iconics through his mouthpiece. They're, they have lungs forever. But Nikki Cross, Asuka, and the Iconics, they're bound for commentary sometime. Uh, whenever they're all done, but they're so good at it. Um, pretty classic start to this match. Um, Asuka starts going for the kicks. It's really good to see. Uh, Bailey eventually gets her knees in. Um, Asuka works over Bailey. Bailey, a lot of back and forth in the smash. Asuka would work over Bailey, then Bailey would work over Asuka pretty good. Um, then Bailey begins to work over Asuka's arm. Asuka did the same thing to Bailey. And there was. The nice spot where it was the bottom rope slingshot and then a second rope slingshot that Bailey did on Asuka. And uh, they bounced Asuka to the table and then Bailey was roughing up Asuka. I don't know what happened, but Bailey, a one legit spinning back and fist. Because even Asuka was like, oops. I think she made up for it because I think she took like an extra hard bump. And and she let Bailey kind of kind of give kind of she got kind of potatoed by Bailey on the outside, and it's like, hey, my bad, it's your turn. So I can understand that she didn't say, oh, you want to shoot, like Natalia did. How unprofessional is that? Boo, Natalia. Glad she wasn't on air. Uh, again, eventually, when they went to the table, they got Nikki Cross got tossed, and literally she jumped up. And the security guy literally, literally on her on his shoulder, carried all four foot eleven inches of Nikki Cross out. That was priceless. Uh, Nikki Cla Nikki Cross towards the end eventually goes back. Uh, Bailey gets towards the barricade where the glasses, and she legitimately got jump scared because Nikki Cross is there banging on the glass. Said hi. It's so, like <laughs> that was a bad. You hear this bang, and literally she like jumped forward, and she, the way she jerked her body around, it was a body's natural reaction to it. It wasn't like this. It was like, oh, what the hell was that? So again, I love the fact that Nikki, had, <laughs> you see Nikki on the glass. Ah! So. That's good to see that natural reaction. Um, that eventually cost Bailey because she got distracted. A little interference from both. Well, Kyrie Sane got Sasha Banks out of the ring. Uh, Sasha tried to interfere a little bit, but um, Bailey threw water in the face of Asuka. That wasn't enough, though. Asuka eventually went, put Bailey in the Asuka lock. Bailey tried to pin. See, ah, too many people have done that to me before. You're not doing it. And then she, like, I don't know what happened. Those couple roll ups, and then Oscar literally just sat down on top of Bailey's chest and pinned her. It was so. This was a, oh, this was a fun match. Only thing that kept this honestly from being a flaming on match was the green mess. If the green mess came out, I would have, I would have lost it. But it was a good, it was a good match. It was a good surf and turf match. And I'll tell you what, Raw is getting better. Although the segments in the second hour make this show seem so long and drag out, the segments on SmackDown aren't as good, but they're shorter and you have more wrestling. I think someone in WWE has finally figured out 
people want more pro wrestling, a little and a little story. You have to have a little something something there. But at least it's not not the opposite. So you have a lot of good pro wrestling and you have some segments. At least it's not the other way around. So you can be thankful for that. And uh, again, that was Monday Night Raw. So the way this week is looking, I'll be putting this up probably in the morning, some or probably later because it is the morning already. Tuesday, I go live stream for Impact. Wednesday is an AEW review. Off on Thursday, I'll be back Friday for SmackDown. There's no wrestling this weekend. So I got a fairly decent schedule. So again, I'd like to thank everyone again. Feel free to respond to any questions via comment, preferably by comment. 